This is a, a very important uh, Buddhist doctrine, and unfortunately it is one concerning which there's a great deal of misunderstanding, and those misunderstandings have a serious consequence. So it's good that we get to know it properly. So first of all, what is kamma? So kamma, the word kamma simply means to act or to behave. But within the Buddhist context, it means um, ethical action and behavior or behaviors that have an ethical consequence. So the Buddha defined kamma simply as, as um, uh, deliberate behavior. Uh, that is when you deliberately try to do something or consciously try to do something. So if I walk from here to there and I accidentally stand on a, an insect and kill it, um, that will have no comic consequence because it wasn't intentional. If I walk from here to there and I see a, a snail or a small animal and I go out of my way to kill it, well that has some sort of what we would say some comic consequence. Okay, So um, Kama is intentional action, psychological, uh, verbal, or physical. That's what it is. Now, the question was, uh, can you change your kamma? Is it possible to modify it? Now, some people, I've heard some people, even some supposedly learned Buddhists say that you can never escape from your kamma. Your kamma has to play itself out. Well, this is definitely not, not what the Buddha taught. Uh, all you have to do is look at the Noble Eightfold Path. One of the steps on the Noble Eightfold Path is right effort. Now, if you couldn't change your kamma, why on earth would you need effort? Everything is predetermined by your kamma. So in the simplest answer is, uh, yes, of course you can change your kamma. And you might even say that that's the whole purpose of the Dhamma, is to change your kamma. Okay? Another misunderstanding you get about kamma is, is that everything is due to kamma. So if you get caught in the rain and catch a cold, that's because in your past life you locked somebody in the refrigerator and they got cold. And if you, uh, uh, you're rich, that's because in your last life you gave lots of money to the sangha. Or if you're poor, that's because you didn't give any money. This is really a very bad misunderstanding. So everything in existence has a cause or causes, but not everything has a moral cause. And when we're talking about uh, kama, we're talking about morally significant behavior. Okay? So, for example, if you get caught in the rain and you catch a cold, that has a cause or causes, but they're natural ones. Okay? The germs, because your body was weak, because it was cold, the uh, cold germs happen to get established in your body. Or if you get a flat tire, that's not because in your last life you slashed somebody's the tires on their car. It's because there was a nail or some broken glass on the, on the road. It had a cause or causes, but not a moral one. It doesn't have a moral significance. Okay, So not everything is due to kamma, and in fact there are some texts where the Buddha says is only a small number of things, only a small number of experiences in your life have a kamic consequence. If we can change our kamma, how do we do that? Well, you might say that the whole of the Noble Eightfold Path is a process, first of all, of modifying and then purifying your thought, speech and actions and this involves changing. So, following the steps on the Noble Eightfold Path. So, for example, the first step is to uh, develop um, a, an orientation. My life is a journey. In which direction am I going to head? Over this way, or that way, or this way? You have to have some idea of where you're going. Hmm? So, some psychological ideas or philosophical ideas of how am I going to, uh, 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 well, what am I going to aim for in my life? Hmm? And then the next ones are thought, speech, and action. So, this pertains to morality, to speak with um, kindness and gentleness and honesty, speech. Uh, uh, thought to, to try to develop uh, or less uh, aggressive or nasty or spiteful or selfish thoughts. And how do you do this? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that some thoughts are 
not really very wholesome from a Buddhist point of view, and try to discourage yourself from doing that. And then actions, once again, there are some actions that have a consequence on not just myself, but others too. So I develop some empathy for others, some awareness of my behaviour, and I try to refrain from things that, that hurt others or disadvantage others. So that's thought, speech and action. And then there's right livelihood. Well, there are some jobs... This is important. We spend most of our life at least a good deal of our life, at our job. So if we have a job that is involves, say, forcing people to do things that they don't want to do, or tricking them, or, I don't know, selling them things that are really not very good or not really worth what they paid for it, and we know this, then that makes us sort of complicit in this dishonesty. It's not just that you do something dishonest, you gradually become a dishonest person. And there are other jobs that, uh, objectively, they are always good, say a doctor or a teacher, okay? But a teacher can do his job very poorly, couldn't care less about the students, he doesn't really take time with them and that. So there are some jobs in their very nature, they are moral uh, or immoral. There are other jobs that are objectively moral, but you may not do them in a moral way. So, for example, once again, you say a teacher, but you don't really do your job properly. Or you're a doctor, and you know all those skills, but you really don't care about your patients. Uh, you oversubscribe your medicine so that you can get more money out of them. That So that is objectively a good job, but you're not really doing it in a proper way. And then the last three steps on the Noble Eightfold Path are perhaps the most important. That is effort, mindfulness and concentration. And together these things make up what we would call psychological training. Uh, it's a long process in which over time you become aware of your, uh, your mind. You set about to gradually and patiently uh, develop it in a certain direction and uh, from that comes a, a deeper knowledge of yourself, others and your role in life and that ultimately leads to you developing wisdom and from that wisdom you're able to free yourself. So I would say that this is what uh, Kama is about. So first of all you can say that not everything is due to Kama. Secondly, we can say that, yes, it is possible to uh, modify or change your kamma. And thirdly, we, have, we are so fortunate to have a very detailed program of uh, training which the Buddha bequeathed to us, that is, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path and all the other teachings.